Hi, how is everybody doing tonight? Pretty good. Good, thank you. Good. Good. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> share my screen. I just got off of the um, slides. So let me get back there real quick. Sorry about that. So we're gonna to meet tonight to um, discuss our app tell and do a check-in on um, tasks one and task two. But before we get started, I have an inclusive opener. Um, just like, what is your favorite fall memory? This is a picture of my dachshund with my daughter and it's one of my favorite fall memories, um, taking her trick-or-treating. My favorite fall memory is sitting at home in the country, um, this, look, just relaxing in the fall. And um, when I was younger, I don't have the opportunity now because I live in the city. We go to a place called Hall Family Farm every year, it's like a family tradition, and do the hay rides and the, buy the pumpkins and the corn mazes. So that's my favorite thing to do. So um, in my case, uh, maybe last year was very nice because we went to, I went with, with some friends to Scarowings and the day after that, we went to, uh, I don't know, it's like some kind of pumpkin picking farm or something. So it was really nice. And this year I haven't done much, but I remember that one from last year a lot. It was a lot of fun. So I actually went pumpkin picking because we go every year. Um, and my teenage daughters, I wasn't going to do it, but they actually said we had to. So we went on a hay ride and pumpkin picking. And it was kind of nice that they actually cared to want to keep that tradition. That's so sweet. This is the first year that I have been able to do those types of memories uh, with my son. He's old enough to like enjoy it this year. Um, but I would say outside of the new memories that I'm making, um, I was in marching band through high school and college. So um, fall is football season and lots of great memories um, surrounding that. Awesome. I think everybody shared. So our goals tonight will be to discuss where we're at with the Aptel, looking at, um, we can start by just any um Anybody want to talk about task one um, and then go into task two, looking at our uh, data noticings and then any final thoughts and maybe just sharing out what our next steps will be um, as we complete the um, Aptel task two. So where are we at with the Aptel? For task one, we had to do research on um, a lot of different categories and I have that and I can pull it up on my paper. I, did, I don't have it in the slides, but um, on efficacy and um, different things like that. So who would like to share out where um, their thoughts about task one? I think task one, um, I was a little nervous with task one because it was starting out to an app tail because we already finished the um, app tool. And I think that um, task one was a little stressful for me because I try to make sure I, I get that 50 out of 50 and a great um, score um, for the first task and be able to have that boost of confidence to finish the, um, the rest of the app tail. So the first part was a little confusing, but as I was working through it, I ended up trying to um, figure out new things and everything like that. So. Okay, my case, um, I actually, did it like with um like did it like um at some parts like last week and this week um we had like that um kind of break so we I actually had the time to do it slowly at my own pace I didn't get stressed that much I just tried to find the information the authors the information and I put it all together um uh, something that I cannot do for uh the task two with all of the information that we have to put together. Uh, but I think we will talk about it that about that later. I was overwhelmed with like the starting point, but once I got in into it, it was good. Um, but the 
finding like really good resources to me, like references, that was a little bit challenging. But I think I think I was happy with what I had after the fact. As I, I thought a lot about, I'm a math coach, so I do a lot of PLCs and a lot of the team meetings. And I, as I was researching, I thought about how the teachers I work with react to professional developments and stuff. And a lot of what was said, I found to be true. Um, professional development, particularly, one of the p references I found said that teachers feel like it's something that's done to them not something that could help them and I feel that with you know there are certain grade levels that are in it to win it but there are some of them that come and you know that they don't want to be there and they don't participate and so just kind of looking on how to change their attitude about professional development and maybe getting more input from them on how we do it from here on I thought that was catching to me and then it, with um, the evaluation part, just thinking about when you're meeting with them, just evidence of what you, they see and next steps. I don't. I think a lot of times when we do our walkthroughs, we have all these lists of things, but I think we need to just kind of start simplifying it and just do, here's the evidence of what I saw and here's what we'll do next with proof. And I think that'll kind of be a little less overwhelming for teachers. And too, while we was doing that, like it was um like the recruiting part, it was very interesting to see what um my two team members had peer reviews um wrote on that because it's always hard to like recruit teachers and keep them there and maintain things. And so that was very interesting when I was looking at that part and writing about it and also um the feedback. Well not the feedback, but the what I've seen in my peer reviews when I was reading you guys' paper. I think that stood out a lot to me and also the profession of development. Yeah, um, I I agree with those those points. Um, Erica, the PD like I had today, um, it was our early dismissal day once a month where all of our teachers are then required to go to different PD options and, and the feeling of many of them is, oh yeah, we're gonna make us sit through some more PD. Um which, so I made that connection just now, but when I was actually working on task one, it made me really reflect back to two different work environments that I've been able to be in. Um, and so thinking about um, a school that I worked at as a classroom teacher where I was a part of a hiring team and I was, um, my voice was heard when I was requesting what PD would be most beneficial to me and my goals versus um, a school where I wasn't a part of those things and how that culture truly did exist of this is a really great school to be in. And it was nice to be able to see these um, best practices and be like, oh yeah, that principal, that administrator was a true leader. Like that's why our culture was so strong as it was in that school. And that's why we had so many people wanting to come and work for our school versus the stark reality of a lot of the other schools don't have that same experience. So it was nice to be able to really see two different experiences in my professional career and be able to align them to these task um, findings. I also agree with Erica. Um, the evaluation part of it got me reflecting a lot because when I know I'm jumping, jumping ahead, but it fits when um, I did the walkthroughs with um, my assistant principal, our focuses were very different um, when we were looking at um, the walkthrough tool, not, uh, not the walkthrough tool, the Marzano's one, because we did the checklist as well. But when we were looking at our own district walkthrough, tool that we use, I was having a lot of like reflections and aha moments just about we as a coaching group within the district calibrated on walkthroughs when it first came out and we did a lot together, but we haven't done it as like an admin team between assistant principal, principal and coach. And I was just, uh, had been reflecting a lot that that could be a really good next step for our school. I thought those were, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Erica. I was going to say, I was going to add to that real quick with our walkthroughs. 
our district has kind of switched to that. So that we have three APs, the principal, me, and the reading coach. So all of us go at the same time. And that's a little intimidating. <laughs> so we, and then we come out and we have our discussions. But as I was thinking about it last night, we pick apart all these little things from all these teachers. But I don't know about your schools, but we have 10 teachers per grade level. So when we go into meetings, there are huge groups, but probably six veteran teachers. We have all new teachers, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint the one, you know, so I, I think we need to narrow it down to here's your first goal instead of they did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, wrong this wrong. So we're trying it kind of like as a grade level goal. We saw this as an issue as a grade level. So let's work on that as a grade level instead of we need to fix all these things at once, especially since we're newer teachers. I think that's a really good reflection. Um, are we um, good with task one for the app tell? Did everybody get to share? So looking at task two, um, and I had went in and pulled up our first step that we're gonna have to do. And I thought this was very helpful last night um, for, for having to go back and use some of our research and look at our surveys, then the observation checklist and um, what work we'll do with our PLCs. Um, I have presented to my PLC group already. Has anybody had that opportunity yet to do that? Or are, you, are we in the process of doing that? I'm in the process. We're doing it tomorrow. Yeah, I just finished collecting all the data, so. Yeah, I mean, too. I have just collected like the the surveys and uh, I did a checklist and the observations today. And I'm still in the process of doing it, too, because um, I've done the surveys, sent the surveys out this morning and got all my feedback this afternoon. And then also, too, is I got to do my walkthroughs tomorrow. And I'm kind of in the same place. Um, I did my walkthroughs yesterday. I pushed out my survey today. So I'm. Um, I, I'm giving them today and tomorrow for the survey um, and then, well, till lunchtime tomorrow and then be able to compile everything for Friday PLC. We well, you don't have school on Friday, so tomorrow it is on Halloween. <laughs> Was there anybody that had any big questions about task two prompt one that we could problem solve together as a team? Um, I think the this what's up on the screen that um, they went over in class yesterday was incredibly helpful just to be able to provide the, the structure to allow my brain to see how it should be set up for each section. So um, I think before class last night, I probably have a lot more questions or wondering than I do now. Same here, um, Heidi. I was trying to read through the examples before class and I was just trying to figure out how the organization of that would look. So I thought this was a very helpful document. If we're good with that, do you, did we want to move on to task two, part two? Um, and this is more of the data piece. Did we, um, with what data we've collected, would we want to, as a group, just kind of go through each of the questions and talk about some of the data notes things that we might have? Sounds good. The first one was teachers have input on professional development offerings at the school. Oddly enough, when I was telling about how my teachers don't wanna do the professional development, they complain about it. It was my highest percentage of yeses. 72% of them said, yes, they do get input on it, but they're still unhappy about it. That was one thing I looked at, I was like, yeah, but if you get all the input, then why is it not working yet? So that was something I need to think about. Our um, instructional <laughs> facilitator takes care of our PDs. And um, last year, our old um, instructional facilitator would have given me a whole different count. So like 21 are saying yes this year and five no, but 
Um, this is the most we've ever had input. Like we've actually have a voice in this one. And she's also doing it kind of like grade levels too, like K through two, three through five, and kind of separating us knowing that kindergarten is not the same as fifth. So why are we all sitting in each other's PLCs when it's not really helping us at the moment? And I had a 100% because we all, there's surveys sent out um, throughout the year about what we want to focus on so we can end up budgeting to where we can spend those funds to um, be able to focus on our PDs on who we need to come in for our school if we're going to do it our little small school or combine with two other schools to make it more efficient. I also have like a 75% saying yes. Normally we have been offered professional development also for um, certification for credits. So sometimes the curriculum um, um, professional, she just sends us like uh, different kind of opportunities and saying, okay, you can get some credits and renewal credits that we need to have. So she's always like sending us that information in each one in our different areas, like um, for example, in, in my case, in the Department of Foreign Languages, uh, the coordinator is always like telling us like, what can we do? What kind of PDs are um, this the district offering just for us? So we just can go and, and, and take those opportunities. Um, and my count so far is pretty even. I've had five yeses um, and four no's um, while I'm still collecting the data. But so our school, the school that I'm doing my internship hours in um, has historically been on a non-traditional calendar compared to the rest of our schools. And this year they're on our same traditional calendar, which allows them to do the early release PD offerings that the district level has. Um, and, and some of our teachers have really embraced that. And then other teachers were very comfortable in not having to do the district-wide PDs in the past. And so they have a, a stark difference in opinion um, about them. So I, I have a feeling that that's probably why they're split like they are so far. With my PLC group, we talked about that. I was surprised that it was 70. I had 71% say yes, because we have a lot of district mandated PD because of new curriculum um, that we're, that they're pushing out this year. So I was actually surprised in the number that did say yes. But I think that once this um, curriculum, we've had a year of implementation, we'll be able to better have like options for professional development and more teacher voice. So the next one was teachers play a role in the development of the school improvement plan. But uh, mine, it was all 100% again, because we break up at the end of the year We um, with the FAMS that we have. Um, so we send it out I'm over the FAMS. So we send it out to each group member who's the leader of the FAMS. So we have to keep that on um, to see where we're at on the FAMS. And then we go back and we take that FAMS and go put it towards what we need to focus on for our school improvement plan. And so that's where they get... Um, the roles of plan, what we should have on our plans and our focuses. Um, 77% yes, 23% no. And I'm sitting here thinking about it. And we, um, I feel that we all do have a say or, well, you know, in our school and we could, we could play a part or a role if we wanted to. And some teachers already have that bad taste in their mouth they're you know they're done they just they don't want to be involved and so they look at it as they're not being offered um or they don't you know nobody cares what they have to say but i don't know that that's really the issue i don't know that the issue is the school per se or the perception of the teachers ours was 61 percent yes 39 percent no um we survey teachers a lot, but a lot of people just don't have an input. So the probably because they don't have an input, they feel like they can't maybe. I don't know. I, I don't think school improvement is probably our strength for sure, but um, we could get more input from them, I think. 
Well, I think um, mine mirrors that. So I had 44% yes, um, 55% or 56% no. Um, I think it goes back to what they said in class yesterday where teachers might not know that they have a say because um, they have a sit representative for their grade level, um, but really truly they they do have a role in it. Um, it's just not that direct immediate in your face role. We talked about Heidi as a PLC team. Mine was actually 88%, but um, we talked about just as um, SIP members, are they communicating back and understanding how valuable and important their role is to their team? So that was like an area of growth that we talked about as a school that for some grade levels, I don't think it's being like clearly communicated back two teams. So um, I think their voice, you know, the the message of what was said at SIT and their voice um, is not being heard because of the, as a team, them not collaborating together and just like disseminating the information correctly with each other. The next one was teachers play a role in setting school-wide policy. And mine was 80 and 20, 80 yes, 20 um, no. And I feel like the one that was the 20 no is because um, our principal is like military style. And so um, she she controls everything with, with certain things, especially with the school wide policy, because she follows the district policy to help her, her, help her school improve with everything, even if we have a school improvement plan. It's pretty split. That's 46% no and 54% yes. Um, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably one of our weaknesses. I feel like we're told what the school-wide policy is, not really have a say in like what we sh what we could be doing or how we can make changes. It's just, here's our policy, follow it. So I could see, definitely see why some or a higher percentage of teachers are saying they don't have a say. Mine was at 82%, but I think at our school it's higher because we've had a difference in administration and this has been like one of their focuses. A year ago, I would, uh, I do not believe teachers would have responded in um, the way that they did in the survey, but because of having new administration, they've really um, spent a lot of time focusing on this. 63% say yes, the rest of them say no. I thought I was going to have like a higher percentage of people saying that no, because normally a district-wide policy, they are just, just implemented by what the district considers that it's like the appropriate things to do. And you know that I haven't listened or um, I've been in the school for like 80 years. So I have never just uh, seen that Maybe one of the uh, um, one of the teachers or any kind of teachers or like a team indeed has proposed one of the district wide policies or, or that it was implemented in the school. So it surprised me a little bit. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, to my uh, PLC tomorrow about that. See what they think, what they think, and what they consider about the, those answers. And um, but yeah, that was a little bit surprising to me. Just a time check, was, we have okay. about five minutes left. Sorry, Heidi, and um, just just giving a time check. Yeah, good, so real fast. Um, mine was 44% said yes, uh, and that surprised me. I actually expected that to be lower uh, because really that district policy, I do believe that those yeses are probably the people who played direct roles in setting up like our PBIS matrix. Um, for school-wide expectations, but I, I expected that to be lower than it was. And just real quick, mine was 52% yes, and I think the same as Lauren. I think the handbook's already made. This is what we're going to do. There's not a lot of teacher input into how that goes typically. <clears throat> Looking at the last two, the development, the school budget, and the hiring process, these were the lower of the two percentages for myself and we as a team talked about 
um, how my principal has talked about how he would like to start implementing like the development of a school budget and how teachers have choice, but it hasn't been implemented yet. And for the hiring process, I think we're just in a time when if an administrator sees that a teacher is a possibility, they jump on them. And it's it's not as easy as it used to be to mm-hmm. um, to gather a team up and to, ha- to organize all of that. And the two is me with the, um, what I'm going to talk about is the hiring process for new teachers. Sometimes the principal would give out, um, she, she normally picks like the lead, the lead people in the area who will always want to do the um, recruiting or hiring process compared to people who don't because nobody ever responds back, but only the ones who wants to do it. And so that was one of my lower end too. Those were both my lowest ones as well. Um, Budget, I was a little surprised for because she does a lot money at the end of the year, a certain amount. I'm not sure what the amount is for each grade level. And each grade level is allowed to come up with a list of things they need for the grade level and they get to order it every year. So that was 41% yes. So that surprised me a little bit. And then hiring, we typically just get one teacher from the grade level and it's not really shared with other people. So that one was 37%. Mine was the opposite. Um, my um, my teacher input for the or the playing in the role of the hiring um, that was actually at um, seventy three percent, and um, there my or at least my principal at the time we got a new one, so I don't know how she operates, but the one at the time was very much um, wanting the team input. So it would he would ask the team, and then we could either represent one or two of us, and so we. Usually Usually took turns and whatnot. Um, so we've always had say and input on why we think that person could be a good member of our team and why maybe, it, you know, maybe that grade wasn't or we didn't think that grade would be suitable for them at that time. Um, and he he pretty much kind of followed it. Um, you know, he, I mean, he made the final decision, but he was able to kind of take our input and, and run with it. So in my case, 63% said no in the question teacher has input in the development and or management of the school budget. Uh, I think that just like uh, the team leaders are the ones that may have like a word or like some kind of meetings with the principal and maybe with the people from the school that administer those funds. Um, but as a teacher, I have never in this time that I've been there working there with them uh, been able like to ask or been in a meeting where they are asking us like um, maybe they have a meeting for a budget for the school year or something like that. So I guess, yes, it does just come for certain people. And for just the last one, uh, the hiring process is 50-50. So I just have seen some emails uh, from uh, the principal that she's asking maybe if we know some teachers or that we just received emails from the districts asking us if we know people that might be hiring uh, that we can have that they can hire like in the for the next school year but that's the only information that i have now we've um come to the end of our time just you know i think we talked a lot of it throughout a lot of our next steps that we'll need to take within the next couple of days does anybody want to add any um thing about next steps I feel confident moving forward. I think that we're we're a really good team and we know how to reach each other when we need help. And I'm curious to share it with my PLC and my administration just to see what their thoughts thoughts on are some of these percentages. Awesome.